Hey, Randy. Hey there, Joan. You're live with everybody here. We're not in okay. se we're not in session yet, but we're just getting settled. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Joan. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Is it still sunny down there? It is. Quite sunny. <laughs> Do you still have an airline ticket home? Uh, I currently have an airline ticket home, and I have a car. Awesome. I have. <laughs> you have a check and check. <laughs> I have a backup. We had two inches of snow today. I um, got that message. <laughs> Kind of glad I. You're in a good in place. In isolation here. There you go. Are your beaches still open? They are on the. You know, I'm in the Indian Rock. You know, 40 minutes out of Tampa, and it's quiet. And yep, everything. The beaches are open. The restaurants are mostly closed. Yeah. Um, but it's quiet, warm. Good. Yeah. It's funny how it's making us harken back to the good old days when the big worry was, do we need to call a snow day or not? <laughs> I know. Oh. This is so just unbelievable. agenda but with an addition of an open session before closed session it's not specifically normally stated in the agenda so we vote to go right away but we need to make a quick motion before sure. we go to closed session so moved second all in favor aye all opposed aye. okay so our first motion is i'd like to entertain a motion to have a um emergency policy to allow remote participation for school board members since we don't have a policy for that so right moved now. really so yeah any questions or discussion um since this is an emergency policy would this should we put an end time for it or is it just for issues related to the current school shutdown as long as the emergency i've called in twice on board meetings since yeah. i've been on I don't, I don't necessarily know if we have to have it. It's there. It's just a case to make sure that there is an explanation yeah. for it. I mean, the, the law is present, but then present doesn't necessarily mean physically present yeah. either. So, right. And there's varying opinions as far as basically going back to our policy. Our, our policies are generally silent on it since we are making some decisions here that are um, relatively um, impactful here moving forward. I think it's as prudent for us to at least make that that known to the public that there may be a way that we are that board members may be participating remotely and we will get a um, specific clarification from our legal counsel as far as how we can do that and make sure that all of our our future meetings as people call in are in line with that but i think that the, the motion that has is on the table right now is, is prudent for us just to make that notice that there will be potentially people calling in um, and potentially board meetings that need to take place in a different fashion than they are now. And can that be streamed, the audio part? Yes. For public? Uh, yes, so there would be ways that we could certainly do that. Sure. We would do every effort to make sure that that's possible. Good. Any other questions? Then a motion to approve it. All those in favor say aye. 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 All aye. opposed? And so we go. And now a roll call vote to go to closed session. Uh, motion first. Yeah. Oh, motion to go to closed session. I hereby move to go to closed session. Second. Okay. So that's by roll call. So all in favor, starting with Julie. Aye. Aye. 
Joan? Aye. 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 And it's unanimous. So we are now going into closed session. So six seconds left. Uh, are we good to go? To, uh, he, he left the room. Just going to be doing the talking. Right? He's confirming. Yeah, we're Then we'll call us back into open session here at five minutes to six. And the first thing on the agenda is the only thing on the agenda. That sounds um, here we go. I can take this part, Dave. What I'd like to do is just take a, a few minutes, um, first of all, to, I guess, just acknowledge that this is kind of an, an unprecedented time for us as a school district and as a community and as a nation as we kind of walk through all the different pieces with, uh, with the pandemic taking place. And the uh, closure of schools on a statewide basis um, is something that certainly we are all finding our way through. Um, when you take a look at the amount of change that's taken place just since last Thursday, um, as we as a district went on and moved towards being on spring break and then having ending our day on Friday with a statewide closure, and then certainly our district going into a spring break week. Um, it, it certainly has caused a, a lot of pieces that I know there's a lot of questions. Um, we are working very diligently to get those answered. And we're also um, certainly looking at how we can put plans in place to support our, our students, um, our families, and our community. Um, yesterday, there was a notice put out by Governor Evers that one lowered the gathering sizes to under 10, which is really what we're trying to adhere to tonight with our board meeting. There was a action at the very beginning of our meeting to do an, an emergency policy addendum that we would allow for um, call-in um, participation by board meetings at, at future meetings. We'll certainly be keeping the public abreast of any of our meetings that are taking place and making sure that they're available online for, for people to, to be able to actively see what's what's occurring and finding ways that people can participate. Um, one of the challenges I think of spring break is one when when it occurred has has many positive benefits for us, but also some has created many challenges. Um, the positive benefit was as the decision was made last Friday to close schools, we were heading on spring break. We didn't have to make a decision for what we were doing on Monday with our students or staff or many of our, our districts surrounding us that was uh, permanent on their minds throughout the weekend, um, which prompted the closure of many of those schools by the county um, on Sunday afternoon. Um, the piece that we were feeling very good about was having this week to, to plan for moving to a remote learning environment to be looking at how we could then put forth a plan that when we returned from spring break, we could really work with our staff to um, al allow them the ample time to prepare, 
and then also distributing out materials that would be pertinent for our students to be able to move into that environment. Um, our plans as a, of yesterday were to really start moving those forward in the communication that we would have liked to have started um, our online environment um, somewhere around the March 30th timeline. The, the governor's ruling yesterday to limit gatherings under 10 um, impacted that because as we are looking at how we need to work with our staff and with our, our families moving forward next year, we, we have some limitations on those size limits. And we're also realizing that our, our county and parts of our state are, are certainly under the um, community transmission of, of the coronavirus. Certainly it's something that is um, a place that, that's new, new for us just in the last day. So we've taken, and I think Brian Grabarski is working as our HR director, and I had many conversations over the last couple days about how do we move forward with plans to keep our staff, our students, and our families safe. And to be very honest, that has become kind of the prime, we've, we've education as our primary goal as a school district, but I would also say that we play a role in trying to keep people safe and making decisions that are in their best interest. Um, one of the things I realize is our limiting factor right now is the ability to get materials out to some of our elementary students particularly, distributing some of our technology to our fifth through eighth grade students. My hope is that we will be able to still do that in, in, the, coming, in the coming week or weeks. Um, I know that there were some, we were trying to see if there was a way to put some plans together um, yet this week take responsibility for just saying I didn't think that was a good idea because I was concerned about um, how we would do that in an expedited manner with um, in really a concern just as how, how do we address that um, under some I guess concerns I guess I have for people's health um, so that's a piece I'm just going to ask for some flexibility latitude um, forgiveness and flexibility as we try to work through that because I think it's a, it's a piece that we certainly value with the education of our kids but I think we also from my point of view needed to look at some other issues as well so that's where that decision came from. Um, what you can expect from a community and a parent standpoint over the next few days is a communication from us on, on numerous topics. One we want to get to you um, resources um, to our families about different services that are available. We've been in, in contact with um, uh, Madison-Dade County Public Health, um, Dade County Emergency Management, numerous other agencies around and we um, as an administrative team have been in collaboration with many of our local school districts to really gather what resources are available for, for food for families, for child care options, um, and really comparing and how we can kind of move forward to support our communities. So we will be getting communications out on all of those pieces in an effort to provide the resources that you need and also let you know where we stand as a, as a district as we move forward with all of our programs, um, including the educational aspects. Um, one of the things that I think is challenging is I've been getting questions from parents as well, what does uh, really uh, closure of schools by the governor that states until a, 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 an, an order reverses it. It's really a, a closure until further notice. I, I anticipate this, you know, I think we need to prepare that this could be a longer term closure of our schools, even though that's not articulated in any of the orders. As we've spoken <coughs> to um, various agencies and as, as school districts in, in the state are starting to prepare for how we um, move into this environment. We are all planning on this being something that is of, of certainly much longer duration than the beginning of April. So as we get better clarity on that, we will certainly communicate that out to families and parents. But from a preparation standpoint, I think we need to, as a community, start to think about um, how do we operate with our kids being out of school. And then what we are going to be doing is working with our staff to see how we can utilize them best to help move forward with some of the educational pieces and also supports for families and, and try to be as best of a resource as we can in that environment. 
Um, tonight's meeting was, was called together for us to really update the board on some very pertinent topics. There's really a few items that, that administratively we thought we needed to bring to the board so that we could have some, some action and movement on. Um, those being some modifications to our employment guidelines so we can add some clarity to staff as we work through um, how we can utilize them, repurpose them, and best serve our, our students and community with the staff that we have. We also certainly want to address some of the food insecurity issues that some of our, our families may be experiencing, particularly our free and reduced lunch families and any other families that may come into um, economic um, challenges in the coming weeks and providing food in our community for them, breakfast and a lunch um, for those children. And then also some of our larger contracts that we, that as we are under closure, we need to address how we um, work with um, the partnerships that have been developed with um, Lamers Bus Lines and Taher Food Service. So with that kind of preface, I open it up to any of the board members for any questions on any of the overview pieces that I provided. Um, and then certainly those were the four items that when the board is ready, we administratively, we be prepared to present them um, um, in our open session here um, per the discussions that we had in closed on some of those pertinent topics. I, I would just like to add um, both thanks and uh, a, a plea for continued patience from the public as this continues to un evolve in an ever-changing fashion and to um, look to our website and um, know that we are collaborating with all of our current education partners and employees to come up with good ideas and plans. There will be a time coming up where we're likely to want to and need some volunteer services, but until we are able to collaborate and articulate more spe specifically on those needs. Um, the best option is to stay tuned to the district website and the links that are gonna be provided on the Wanakee School District website. Anyone else? I'd like to um, thank uh, Randy and Brian and Steve and Diane for the measure leadership that you've taken. It's not an easy course you're going through. It's almost changing hourly on your directives from the government. And again, that's something as citizens uh, in our community, we need to understand that it's, uh, it's a changing landscape. And what you plan on doing at 8 in the morning may be changed by noon. So thank you guys for the time and the leadership you're showing. And uh, I look forward to discussing these items. And I appreciate that, Mark. I would extend that. This is our spring break. I've had our entire administrative team working <coughs> tirelessly this week to try to pull together as much information as we can, adjust to um, um, timelines that are and decisions that are impacting us. Um, the plans that we had at 12:55 yesterday changed at one o'clock, and I mean, and, uh, it, to, to the point where we really needed to. Uh, and it's put us in the place where we are now here in front of you tonight presenting to you the best information we have with anticipation that there's going to be continued changes. So I appreciate those comments, Mark, and I greatly appreciate all of my team that have been really working tirelessly on this for a number of days. I'd also like to uh, express my thanks to Randy and his entire team and uh, also, uh, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is take out some of the stress, uh, the uh, negative uh, information that we hear on a daily basis. And I think uh, with the uh, proposals that we were, we're going to move forward uh, for a vote, I think that will take out some of the stress, uh, uh, at least in the short term. Thanks, Jack. Then I guess we can go ahead. We have several proposals that have been drafted, and so if you want to just take one at a time and then vote on them, that would be wonderful. I move uh, approval. First thing, oops, go ahead. You're not ready for that yet. Oh, I was just going to just introduce the employment guidelines. Yeah. I'd like Brian just to walk through it at a high level. Um, some of the changes that we are, are making to amendments of our guidelines per our staff. 
Uh, the amendments uh, reference would relate to this school year's uh, school closures due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and throughout, I'll, I'll reference the term staff, but staff encompasses the different employee position groups uh, identified in the six guidelines that we have, um, with the exception of uh, daily substitutes. Uh, they're, they're not included in, in these this proposal. Uh, the idea is that our staff will be continued uh, to be paid at their same and current uh, rate of pay and kept at their same benefit level throughout the remainder of this school year uh, dur during the, the time of this uh, closure and, and re as a result of the pandemics. Um, during that time, uh, we're going to work creatively and flexibly uh, with with employee groups and supervisors and, and uh, to deliver ever-changing uh, type of service to our to our students and, and uh, our community um, that that can include and could include things like virtual work uh, essential staff in, in positions and or working uh, from home in different settings um, Employees uh, and supervisors will work together to to find some of these different types of of uh, this different type of work, um, and it will be uh, as ever changing as we work through it. Um, employees will have some a avenues uh, if if through the this uh, their personal situation changes or needs to their availability to work needs to change. Um, the employees will have access to their normal uh, bank of days to be out of work, which could refer to uh, sick leave, um, uh, vacation leave, personal days, uh, absent without pay or comp time, depending on their employee group and, and personal status. Um, in addition, uh, they employees will be able to uh, access the four snow or emergency weather days um, as part of their personal bank of days uh, to be absent from availability of work um, and be paid. Uh, if, uh, as a district, we're committed to the fact that if uh, an employee is identified as high risk, uh, has been quarantined or advised to self-quarantine, um, we will not take adverse action against them. Um, they will communicate that with their supervisor and if available, we'll have alternative at home work for them to complete. Um, and we'll also provide employees an opportunity if they wish to, to uh, enter a, a different kind of status called uh, out of active employment um, that during the, this pandemic time uh, that we are operating under changed uh, non-typical um, operations that they can uh, basically pause their employment which means that they will not be paid their wage or their benefits but they will not be expected or asked to take any uh, work duties um, but it is expected that they will be available and re well reserve return to the their position original position if we resume normal operations um, and any this temporary this this temporary non-active status would would cease at the end of the school year, um, and so hopefully we, we really want to as a district remain committed to our employees, keep them financially whole, uh, but also allow them to make decisions based on their personal circumstances. Thank you. Clarification: uh, This includes long-term subs. Y yes, it, yes, it would include uh, it would include um, long-term sub positions to the extent that they're who they're filling in for is not able to to presume the duties. So basically, we will require a motion to accept this policy or adopt the policy. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I think we should also clarify it also includes the co-curricular staff for this part of the season. 
cor correct part yeah. of the school year. And they're going to be expected to continue to be involved and work with families in whatever way they can, however way we're working. Yeah. Yes. So if any other questions or discussion, then all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Aye. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> all those opposed say no. And the motion passes to adopt that. Um, the next item I would like to bring forward is with regards to Lamer's bus lines. Uh, this is a, a piece that obviously with us being under a closer situation, us um, moving forward with continued negotiations with Lamer's um, to uh, address the needs of that partnership um, and also negotiate some cost savings with regards to some of the aspects of that contract that would not be utilized. Motion to accept. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. And the proposal on members passes. Wonderful. Um, the next item is with regards to Taher Food Service. Um, this is a proposal for us to again maintain our partnership with Taher and also for us to move forward with um, working with them on developing a food program for our free and reduced lunch families and others that are in need in the community. Is there a motion? I move we accept the language. Is there a second? Second. Um, I think we should be clear that the language is that we're going to keep that Tahers staff will be paid and employed to provide food to our free and reduced lunch program, which is about 350 students in the Wanaki School District. Um, and while that program is normally funded by us receiving payment from other students buying lunches, um, we do have money in our contingency fund <coughs> to at least get us going for a while. Um, and there has been offers from some people in the community to help us fund that program because it is something that's going to have to come out of our budget in order to keep this going and we won't have the normal revenues we would usually have to pay for it. Uh, so that's what the proposal <coughs> is. Um, how we're going to deliver the meals is going to be a little bit developed as time goes on. But it, we are considering a one hour pickup time in the morning, a one hour pickup time around lunch. Um, and possible volunteer deliveries for or ways to use our vans to deliver meals to the families that don't have transportation to get here and pick them up or kids who may be at home who don't have a way to get here. Um, but we're going to develop that strongly and hopefully very quickly um, to get that done. That communication should be out, I'm anticipating, tomorrow or Friday at the absolute latest. Um, but I'm anticipating that that's already starting to be scripted and we will get that moving as soon as possible. And again, thanks and appreciation to community members who are willing and able to volunteer once we have a more set plan. I gotta say, this is the one thing I've heard the most about in the community so far is about how will those children still get the food that they were normally able to get from the school district. So it is encouraging to see that that's what people cared about a lot. Randy, can you articulate for, for the public who are listening in how we can access information from our web page? Yes, um, there will be a, a new web page that will be launched within the next day. Um, it's that will have all of the information as far as resources for families um, and our staff and our kids on resources with regards to the food access. All of those pieces related, related to this time and period will have a link on the very front page of our website and that'll link us exact to, a, to a new site that's under development. So what we anticipate that will be launched ASAP. Um, it's in its development stage right now and should be ready to go tomorrow or by the latest on Friday. So questions parents may have about and students, the projected start of the uh, classes, educational plan, all that will be shared at that site as those plans unfold. Right. Well, what I'll do for the instructional pieces 
is we'll continue to push out messages to parents as we have over the last week as, as of developments have occurred. And then all of those announcements will also be posted on that website. So that, that will be our primary method of communication is through our district email. And also we know that for some of our families that don't have access to email, particularly for the free and reduced lunch aspects, we're looking to see if we can do a push out to a phone, to a, a call through our phone system to them so that they're aware of how they can access that. So there'll be a couple different ways you can get information. One is watch your emails and two, to be watching the website. And we'll update that with everything that we push forward. So, any further discussion? Otherwise, motion. Oops, I need to I need to so quick. Oh, we, we need to vote. We have to vote on this. Yeah. We need to. We no. didn't vote. We did not vote. We sorry. have not voted. Yet. Sorry. So, uh, for those oh, in favor of the taher and the food, food yeah. say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. Abstain. And Jack wants to abstain. I have two actually. And oh, two Mike abstains. wants to abstain. And let's see. No, was there I, I, the item that I, I, I just wanted to go through was the meetings. We have a, we have a whole list of meetings that we have scheduled, and I just want to determine which ones are essential for us to hold right now, mm -hmm. and which ones we may want to cancel at this point and postpone until a later date. So at this point, we have a curriculum meeting on the twenty third. We postpone that one and okay. bring that back at a, at a future time. I, I, I guess the only caveat is it's likely my last. Okay. So I don't care. <laughs> I, I'll go with the group, okay. but I will say that one more time. I mean, I'd love to be involved and do my part while I still know what's going on and can. Sure. Maybe we leave it to Tim. I can do that. And um, other members. Just, I, I just know that our team right now is working. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no I feel our team needs time to roll out an education plan. No worries. We need to cancel whatever meetings we can. Okay. Right, so there's that one. Human resources on the 24th. Brian, what's the pressing issue there right now? It, it would have been um, discussion about um, handbook language uh, edits for all employee groups and. Uh, in the teacher compensation review, uh, which I've had to pause all of for the last two weeks. And so I, I'm comfortable, uh, those are things I've got to keep working on, but okay. I'm comfortable waiting. And right. oh, we have to prioritize. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Just got it. Um, obviously, we have a special community workshop meeting, which I'm going to cancel. That was meant to be referendum related. Uh, yeah, there's, we can't have a gathering anymore. Nope, so I'm going to cancel that one. We have a budgetary board workshop on April 8th. Um, we may just want to keep that as it's, it's, it's recommended as a special meeting of the board. We may just want to keep that as a marker right now. The topic may change, but yep. it's been approved by the board, so we'll keep yeah. and evaluate. A regular meeting is on the 13th of April. Um, I would think we would keep that. Yep, we have to keep that one. And, we'll and we do have a potential for changes face to face uh, or face timing or yep, whatever we'll, going we'll, forward. What we'll do is we'll take on. yep we'll take a look at all of our different options for how we can come together by that time. Um, elections with the board of canvassers on the 14th. I think we need to that's maintain that. That's Unless they cancel yep. the election. <laughs> um, and then we have a budget committee on the 27th. I, I would think we have we a, we have a general out. meeting between now and then. I'd say keep it only yep. for the sake that there might be a lot of budgetary things we're going to have to move yep. by then. Yeah. Yep. We have a tentative reorg meeting on May 4th. I think we keep that for right now. Yep. Um, and then we're back into the May meeting and the June meeting. So, so just for clarifications, what we'll cancel, cancel the curriculum meeting on the 23rd, the HR meeting on the committee on the 24th, the community workshop on the 30th, and we'll keep all of the other ones at this point. All right. Is there any other business? Otherwise, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second.
Any second from Jack? All those in favor say aye. 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 All aye. those opposed say no. And thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. I think we're still being taped. Yeah. Steve, can you grab Brian? Yeah. Yeah, challenge.